Have you been looking for a really great book for your daughter? She's maybe 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. Well, please join me on Books Alive as I sit down with author Joan Bauer. She won a Newbery Honor Award for Hope Was Here. She has some other great books, and that's coming up on Books Alive. could not miss this incredibly fabulous opportunity to show you, to introduce to you the wonderful Joan Bauer. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, Barb. This is just an absolute treat. As I was telling Joan before, I have sort of a top five books for young adults, and Her Hope Was Here is absolutely right up there, and it is just fantastic. So thank you so much for that book. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you launched your career, am I correct, with a giant uh, pumpkin here? Squashed. I did. I most certainly did. I wrote it, actually, after a car accident that oh. I had. I was a screenwriter, and I had had a car accident, and um, in during the time of recovery, I got this story of this overcoming funny teenager, and I needed to overcome, and I needed to be funny at the same, and, you know, so it was an amazing, that book was quite a gift to me of, wow. of learning how to sort of never give up, you know. Yeah. Well, what happened to you in the car accident? I had to have neurosurgery, and I had to, yeah, I was kind of out of sorts for, for, for about a year. My goodness. Uh, a lot of chronic pain. So sitting at my mm -hmm. desk was difficult, mm -hmm. but Ellie's voice was so strong. She oh, just, bam, just came to me. And the human humor was just always there, so I was <laughs> laughing and hurting at the same time. So that's uh -huh. a little thing that not everybody understands about that novel. Oh, that one's really great. There's a line in here where she says she has to find the courage herself. It has to, she has to look for it. Her, her father says, I get that. And you said um, it was as though some, something broke free and, and got born in that moment. And I thought, wow, what a gift for, for girls, uh -huh. but for anybody of any age to find out, you know, you have to get the courage yourself. I think that's true. I think that we get this idea that dreams are something that, well, I'll, I'll be starting at any moment, my dream, you know, or I'll just, yeah. something will happen, a curtain will come down, mm -hmm. you know. And yet it's, it's real. it's about shoe leather, it's about being realistic about your time, it's about, you know, laying all that out, and mm -hmm. Ellie does that. And mm -hmm. that's why I love the metaphor of, of, of growing, because you have mm -hmm. to dig in the soil, you have mm -hmm. to plant the seeds in the ground, mm -hmm. you have to wait, you have to tend that, you, you know, pick out the bugs and watch the storms and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what happens mm -hmm. when we're trying to do something big. And trying to do something new, you know? And so that was very much, very personal for me, too, at the time. Mm -hmm. And she has the courage to do it all. And she's good at it, too. Yeah, she is good at it. She, and she, uh, she just is. It's a gift for her. And uh -huh. she, she has enough confidence to not let people who don't understand stop her. And her father, as I recall, he doesn't get this. No, he doesn't get it. He's threatened by it, I think. Um, but her grandmother really gets it. Uh -huh. And, you know, sometimes all we need is one person. One person, yeah. All we need is one yeah. who really understands that. So, <laughs> so she has that one person. And my grandmother uh, was a professional storyteller oh, in real life. Oh, wow. And so she was always encouraging me. Mm -hmm. So very much a great deal of her spirit mm. is in the grandmother in that book. Oh, all the grandmothers, all the characters. I mean, this represents quite a gaggle of girls here. Mm. They're all very um, self-reliant and um, funny mm -hmm. and strong. I mean, this, this would be a great group of friends to have. Oh, that's such a nice thing to say. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that. One of my fantasies would be to have all of my characters actually have dinner at the Welcome oh. Stairways, oh, cool. which, of course, is where Hope Was Here oh, is, uh, yes. takes place. Yes. Because, you know, I, I really care about them. They could become my friends. Mm -hmm. And they're very real to me mm -hmm. um, as the books progress. Mm -hmm. So thank mm -hmm. you. And I love Gaggle mm -hmm. of Girls, that alliteration. <laughs> I'm going I'm to use oh, that quite please. often. Please, feel free. <laughs> well, I felt, and you know, when I went back and reread everything because I wanted to do that to prepare for this I thought wow what a toolkit mm -hmm. we're like handing kids a toolkit and this one thwomp you sort of 
leaped out of the squash patch there and, and <laughs> into a whole different world yeah. with Thwonk. This is so funny. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I, I wanted, I'd always wanted to try fantasy, and it, was, it, it really was a big change. I didn't want to do the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it, it all came about um, watching my daughter really navig navigate the really complex waters of middle school and high school and mm -hmm. the in crowd versus the, you know, the out crowd and mm -hmm. some of the pain of that. Mm -hmm. And I certainly did that as a young person, and, and I, uh, I wanted to show, um, show what some of those journeys were like. Uh, but I created a Cupid um, who comes into a young girl's life, a teenager's life, um, but he's irritated, you know, because he's sort of this world-weary Cupid, and he knows how these things can go. And this teenage girl, uh, she's just always in love with the wrong guys, constantly. So this Cupid shows up, and she says, oh, this is great, total power, you know. Uh -huh. I just want you to get him from me. I want you to get Peter from me. Right. But, of course, the lesson is that it's not, you know, you know manipulation is, is, mm -hmm. is, is not what it might appear on the, mm -hmm. on the surface, and trying to control another is never satisfying. Oh. Um, so learning all of that about who she is, it was, mm -hmm. it was fun for me to do that. And the genetic perfection is not really all it's cracked up to be. Boy, that's true. I thought that was so great. My favorite scene in that is when they, the two of them get in the car and they're zooming across town and, and he just keeps looking at her because he's just so enamored and they, they head into the school. Well, the glove compartment opens and all the parking tickets fall out and they go in and they're invited to the young Republicans, the young Democrats, the young Independents, and, and the young undecided. Because and and, yeah. <laughs> they're so popular and fabulous. You know, that was so great. Oh, thank you. And then when she evolves in that night at the Valentine mm. dance and she gets her camera there at the end and starts really being true to herself, that was just amazing. I just loved it. Thank you. It was, it was just constantly with a book like Thwonk, you just have to keep letting the energy out. You just mm. keep pushing it and pushing it mm -hmm. and pushing it. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, and AJ has to realize that her greatest gift mm -hmm is as a photographer. Mm -hmm. So she sees the world through a very interesting lens and she needs to be able to tune back into that again. Mm. She needs to see the unique truth of what her voice is and you know what she can be as an artist. And she lost that when she was just, you know, mm -hmm. interested in the most popular guy in school. But mm -hmm. then she gets it back. She gets it back. And that was that was a real she gets her power back. She gets her mm -hmm. voice back. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really try to do with, with a lot of my teenage girls. Mm -hmm. When a when a young person finds their voice they've really found their power. Mm -hmm. And that is exciting for me as their mother, you know, <laughs> to be able to sort of watch them and help them along on that road. Two things came to mind as you were talking. One is how important it is for fathers to be a presence for girls. Yes. And, you know, when I saw the movie Father of the Bride and Steve Martin goes out in the driveway and he's playing basketball with her before the wedding, there's the scene here where the dad goes out with her and takes a grapefruit and he puts peanut butter in it and cardinals come and both of them are shooting with their zoom lenses and then they go home and watch Marx Brothers movies and eat <laughs> meatloaf sandwiches oh. you know and to me both scenes were so much alike because they get the girl you know they understand their daughter and they love who she is mm -hmm. that was fabulous thank you very much uh, the, the the father was a very he was a very precious character for me, the way I sort of developed him and what, when I saw what he had inside. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of fear because, you know, his daughter wants to be a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. he, w he was a failed filmmaker. He doesn't want her to get hurt. So he's trying to control her in a different way. And, and yet by doing that, he's losing some of his voice as a dad. He's losing that mm. part of his artistic you know, his artistic voice that he gave to her. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that everybody is finding the authentic part of themselves in the story. And I loved sort of watching that intersect. That's the second thing that came to mind is, you know, we were talking about being mothers of daughters. Yes. And how do you help them find, you know, that wonderful thing that, mm -hmm. that defines them, that mm -hmm. gives them their confidence, their, their place? in the world. I mean, you, you say that in your book so many times mm. that if they can find that one thing or find their place like tree, yeah. you know, have you, do you have any tips on that for your, for, for other people? Well, I think only, you know, I, I, maybe, <laughs> maybe, Go ahead. but I'll tell you what, the, I say maybe because in my own life, 
I know that the things when I was growing up, and even now, the things that I'm best at, sometimes I don't have the most confidence mm. about. I think, oh, gee, maybe that wasn't, or, or you know. It's yeah. interesting how sometimes the gifts that we have, things try to just come and stomp on them, mm. you know? And so, and then we don't, we don't achieve maybe what we could do because mm -hmm. either they feel it's exciting when they come out and that's sort of scary, or there's mm -hmm. a freedom to it and maybe mm -hmm. that feels mm -hmm. somehow scary, or that yeah. was easier for me and maybe it should be more work. Mm -hmm. All of these mm. complicated things that we mm. think about what work should be or what, you know, mm -hmm. our identity should be, all those things. Mm -hmm. I, I think the best thing we can do for young people is when we see them doing something nicely you mm -hmm. know well whether it's being a good friend or just you know being a good neighbor or you know playing the flute or whatever and just say you know what I I just want you to know I, I think what you did is really neat wow you know I think yes. I just I really encourage you to do that I'd love to see you do more of that wow just and mirror just back. begin to see mirror back okay. and let them know the small things mm -hmm. the big things and you know sometimes the small things can tell a big story mm a big story. Mm -hmm. So as we go, you know, along the path mm -hmm. with our children mm -hmm. to look for those, mm. to look for that's those. That's the genius. It really is. If you can be tuned in like that. I think so. That's awesome. Yeah. Well said. Oh, well, thank you. All right. Well, let's <laughs> grab one of your best friends, I'm sure. Uh, Miss Jenna. Oh. <laughs> Rules of the road. When this hit Maryland, it was huge. Uh, I can tell you that. I was in a, working at an independent bookstore, mm. and I'm pretty sure this, I know it was one of our Maryland Black Eyed Susan books. Oh, what a great story this is. Mm. Now, I thought it was interesting that you introduced the alcoholic father in this book. Yeah. I mean, that took on quite a, a challenge there. Any, any special reason why you worked him in? Yeah, and I didn't have to do any research oh, on the okay. alcoholic father. That okay. was certainly my, my journey with my dad. Okay. Um, he, you know, never, never, never beat it. Wow. Just never beat it. Mm -hmm. and, and yet, I know that part of my strength mm -hmm as a person has come from going through that mm -hmm. and having seen you know that it's um, I it's resilience it's learning it's it, it's learning and seeing and feeling that pain and looking at it and then deciding you know what I'm gonna keep going anyway one of the most profound things I ever did and probably one of the things I'm most proud of in my life was that I continued to have, because my folks divorced when I was young, I continued to have a relationship with my dad. I learned how to have a healthy relationship with a not really healthy person. Wow. That is amazing. So I that was pulling amazing. from the shadows of my life mm -hmm. here in powerful ways. Mm -hmm. And yet, when this book began, I could have had Jenna begin with less empowerment that I gave her. Mm. But I didn't want that because this mm -hmm. was a story about a kid who had already survived. Mm -hmm. Now she was becoming an overcomer. Mm -hmm. And then after that, she was becoming a prevailer. Oh, wow. That was her journey. Uh -huh. That was her journey. Uh -huh. And she was able, because of what she'd struggled with, it's amazing how the application of that she was able to use that with the other characters. And mm -hmm. as the plot got more complicated, mm -hmm. she was able to say, gee, you know, I know what it's like to have a person, an important person in your life. She says this to Mrs. Gladstone when her son is doing all these awful things at the company. And Janet can honestly say, mm -hmm. I know what it's like to have an important person really not pay attention to you or dismiss you. Mm -hmm. I know what that's like. Mm -hmm. But Mrs. Gladstone, don't give up. It's and not all that you are. Yes. That young voice telling, right. yes, Harry Bender. Oh, well. Oh. My gosh, what a human being. Oh, thank you. What a fabulous human being. Thank you, thank you for Harry. Thank you. I and mean, I short. think I was trying to create what my dad could have been if he'd gotten it together. Mm -hmm. I do believe that very much. Mm -hmm. Harry was a, just such a huge healing character for mm -hmm. me. It was, he gave me great delight to mm. be able to let him be as big as he was, you know. So my, thank you for that. My favorite line, I think, about him was that his secret of success, because he was such a successful shoe salesman, yes. was that he cared about people. Yeah, right. And that he could, you know, each one that came in, he kind of got their story, and then he could meet, fit the shoe to the story, That's more right. or less, you yes. know. That was so cool. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And he, it was genuine, you know. I've, I've, I've known salespeople like that who just loved people, mm -hmm. and, the, and, and, and that was the number one thing that they gave. 
the fact that they were selling something of value mm -hmm. really sort of came secondary. Second, yeah. And I wanted yeah. to capture that. Wow. In Harry. Wow, Jenna is a is a wonderful character in that. And um, then you you shifted gears a little bit again, and we did backwater yes. here with Ivy. Yes. And I have I carry a line from this book too, and it's the one that says that living in a family of successful lawyers is like being a goldfish in a tank of snapping turtles. It's hard to have a lasting presence. <laughs> that's, that's the line. Thank you. That's one of my favorite lines. I am really honored that you, that you had that down. <laughs> oh, God, I love that. That's Thank great. You. And she goes on quite a journey there. And, oh, yeah. and you really give us the sense of people's stories and family stories being very important. She really does. But I, I'll tell you the story behind that line okay. that you just said. Cool. That was originally about four pages of manuscript. Wow. I was trying to explain what it was like for Ivy to live in this house of, you know, you know, quibbling lawyers and all this. And then I just real, and it was just taking forever to explain. And then this is the beauty about humor. Uh -huh. You can just carve it away and just say it in a few lines. And I went, oh, oh, okay, yeah, that's it. I got it. <laughs> so that's when I love to be able to just, you know, sort of slam something and let all of the stuff you don't need fall away. Mm -hmm, and you're mm -hmm. kind of there with a diamond. Uh huh. But Ivy's journey, very, very much in a different kind of a family. And the question is, there is maybe a hermit aunt living in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Now, the family, most of the family, doesn't even want to acknowledge this unstable person. Yes. And so they don't, they don't let her be part of the family. And yet Ivy is saying, but wait a minute, she's part of us. We, and and there's, a, there's the beginning of a family history is being put together by, uh, by, by Ivy and her, and, and her aunt. Mm -hmm. But we can't do this family history without her. We have to find her. Mm -hmm. And there's something in Ivy that she doesn't understand until halfway through the book, that as she's trying to find Josephine, she's trying to find a part, part of herself. Oh, yeah. So that journey is, you know, we've all been on that journey, mm -hmm. climbing up. Mm -hmm. Who are we? Yes. What are we made of? Yes. Who are all the people, not just the mm -hmm. hand-chosen ones mm -hmm. that you can bring out in public all the time, mm -hmm. but all of the ones who have been part of mm -hmm. our story. Mm -hmm. And I was so interested in mm -hmm. that. Yeah, in that's that kind great. Of a journey. Yeah. And yeah. the idea, too, that you, you figure out who you are and who you aren't. Yeah. I think you had one of the grandmother characters say that to, to one of the other characters, and I loved that. And, and um, the idea of taking from your family, you know, um, Jenna, going back to Rules of the Road, as I remember, when she got her new car, she waxes it with a circular motion that mm. her father had taught her. Mm. So she chooses to take some things from her family the way Ivy would and leave some not so savory things behind un unchosen you know and i mean like i said this is just like a toolkit <laughs> oh, i you're mean so it's good just thing. fabulous it's so cool all right well let's get the prima prima here <laughs> <laughs> hope was here yeah <gasps> <laughs> well I, I don't even know where to begin with this one i mean the characters are so fantastic there's such hope in all of them the 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 sense of hopefulness and joy in all your books and in, in all your characters is so wonderful. And the staircases mm. that come together, can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, years and years and years ago, I read that Quakers in their front doors had something called welcome stairways that were double staircases. One came from the left, one came from the right, and they met at the front door. And it was supposed to symbolize that whether life comes at you through troubles or through blessings, you're supposed to greet them one and the same because it's part of life. Mm. And isn't that true, too? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the dark and the light mm -hmm. comes together, mm -hmm. and we just have to open the door to it. Mm -hmm. And it enlarges us at peop as people. Well, oh, my goodness. And, you know, my mother was a high school English teacher, oh. so I see a metaphor like that. I yeah. just take it in my teeth, and I'm just, <laughs> just not going to let it go. So I thought, okay, this is what I have to do. And that is very much a symbol of this story. Mm -hmm. That's what Hope does. That's mm -hmm. what GT does mm. when he's running for mayor of mm -hmm. his small town with leukemia. You know, another part of that story was, um, what does strength really look like? Does it really mean that we're healthy, physically healthy? Or is it more important what you've really got inside to be a leader? I asked, trying to just sort of turn the rock over and just say, come on, folks, it doesn't have to be. You know, there, there's, there, there's strength inside that we need to look at in humanity that's, that's powerful. That's what gives hope mm -hmm. in every situation. Mm -hmm. Mm. And the clown nose. I mean, that oh, was pretty fun. You. All right. Um, you.
followed up rules of the road with um, best foot forward, and I thought that was really cool. But I know we're going to run out of time, so I want to grab Peeled okay. because that is your brand new one. Mm -hmm. And oh, was this fun! And is she, mm -hmm. Hildy is a <laughs> great character too. All right, now where did this come from? Oh, it came from everywhere. I it it, it came from my <laughs> anger at oh. how sometimes the media misrepresents you know certain stories and just squeezes them and just builds them up mm -hmm. much more than they should be mm -hmm. it came from my desire always to want to be a journalist and i never really you know wrote for a newspaper but just the this sort of the salute to uh, to people who who investigate and, mm -hmm. and 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 find truth in the midst of you know a lot of closed doors um, it it talked about still I'm going back to my love of, of people of the land because this takes place in Apple Country mm -hmm. in New York. Um, and also it talks about a maybe ghost and maybe a haunted house in town. Mm -hmm. And that to me was a symbol of some of the ghosts we have in our lives. Not mm. real ghosts, but the memories that we have. The things that maybe we think have gone away but they really haven't mm -hmm. and you know what does that mean what does it what does it mean to be how do we deal with that how do we look at them now you know to see really what they're made of mm -hmm. and I also wanted to explore because let's face it since September 11th and mm. we're in we're a nation that is much more afraid mm -hmm. than we ever were before some of that is certainly justified but what happens when fear begins to enter in a community and what can wise voices how can wise voices really help people um, just be strong in the midst of a lot of discouragement. So all mm -hmm. of those things, mm -hmm. man, I, mm -hmm. had, I had a lot of roads mm. intersecting with that. Mm -hmm. And then finding the humor of that oh. in Apple Country and, yeah. and all of that was very strategic for me. That's one of my absolute favorite books of any of the ones that I've ever written. I had the best time last night reading aloud to my daughter some of the mistakes that the newspaper was having uh. to go back and say how sorry they were. Yes. The Great Dame. Yes. You know. Instead of the Great Dame. Yes. yes. Oops. Right. Yes. I had a lot of fun yes. writing that. That was yes. really great. Thank you. Well, Joan, I just, you know, your, your sense of humor and all of the different little concepts and ideas and, and toolkit that you have created. I mean, this is just an incredible body of work. Thank you. And, you know, if I were a girl at, you know, the age of 11, 12, 13, I would just go to the library and check them all out and just stack them up by my bed and go through them. They're the kinds of things you can read and reread. Thank you so much. And that means a as lot. a parent, you know, and you go into the young adult section, some of it's scary. And, but, you know, <laughs> this stuff is just fantastic mm. stuff. Mm. And uh, so thank you so much for being with us today. This thank is you. just a real, real pleasure and privilege. And as always, please come in and see us at the library.